Cosplay World for the fifth part in a six part series on Taki's armor from Soul Calibur. Now, if you're interested in seeing the full six part series, check out FinalConflictCore.com because the entire set will be there in the armory, along with tons of other awesome stuff. And if you're already in the armory, awesome. Thank you for your support. Um, so this time we're going to be doing the torso sections and some of the details and extra little tidbits uh, that I may have missed. Uh, so this is going to be the pleather sections and I'm using craft foam as a base. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, and then we're adding pleather and the glue we're using here is um, the fabric glue. Yes, a fabric glue. So the pleather has a mesh backing and I'm sure the first thing you would jump to is Weldwood Contact Cement, but I'm not a huge fan of how Weldwood Contact Cement kind of uh, seeps into pleather uh, and the fabric glue does a much more job. It's thicker um, and it doesn't damage the fabric, which I guess is why they use it for fabric glue. <laughs> So yes, uh, the base here is going to be all in various thicknesses and we're going to try and use uh, as much brown as possible. This is because the armor is brown and we want the inside to be nice and finished rather than some random goofy color. Uh, you know, walking around and suddenly you can see some pink or purple popping in out from behind it. Um, we can of course paint it on the inside, but uh, starting with the base color to to start <laughs> is always good. I like to do that with other materials when I can. I do kind of not do that with um, my PVC sheeting. Uh, PVC sheeting comes in a bunch of colors, uh, but I just have a ton of white around, so you end up using that. Rawr, I should be better about this. <laughs> anyway, um, wait. Uh, uh, the foam is going to be double layered, <laughs> and the purple layer you see is going to be hidden away. Um, now, what I'm doing is, yeah, I'm just putting the glue down and we're going to cut this template out pretty simply. Uh, and we want what we're doing here to be semi-flexible. Maybe if I went with a heavier kind of hide armor, that probably would be good. Um, but I didn't have that much experience with actual leather work at the time. So this is a good second best option, I guess. Also, it's, is it cheaper? I don't know. Well, the place I get leather from, if it's hide, it's not that expensive. It, it, whatever you have on hand. I'm sure I, if you buy leather from a fabric store or a craft store, it's going to be super expensive. And this is a good option to not spend a bazillion dollars. <laughs> so um, because we're going to be trimming this uh, with the warbler, it's not a huge problem that the edge is showing. This is also a, a really awesome advantage to um, using warble as a trim. Uh, one thing I do with my armor these days is if it is in PVC sheeting, the plastic sheeting, um, I line the inside with craft foam. Craft foam's pretty comfortable. Um, but if I just had the craft foam smashed in, uh, on the back with the of the PVC sheeting, the edges would look kind of icky. <laughs> so the trim along the edge cleans it up very, very nicely. I'm happy with that. Uh, and this is what I'm going to be doing here as well. I'm going to be hiding the fact that there's several layers of craft foam behind the warbler. Um, here we have a pin. It is going to be uh, done up in the same way. It's just a bit of craft foam and a bit of uh, leather. <laughs> um, we're actually going to be painting this. Uh, I'm not sure why I thought... Anyway, I think I did the texture of the pleather because it, it matches the texture uh, of the, the belt and things like that, but I wanted the coloring of the armor. That's I think where I got that middle ground with. Uh, and we'll be painting that up with the purple and the wash just the same as everything else. Um, there's a few other details here also in a bit of craft foam as well. Uh, they're layered over each other and the Warbla actually helps to stabilize them together in addition to the uh, fabric uh, fabric glue. Uh, wherever the trim on the Warbla meets up, they obviously stick together. So it's pretty nice <laughs> to take advantage of the fact that 
Warble is also thermal adhesive. <sighs> oh well. Um, we have are going to be making the sword in the last video here, but before that, let's make a mount. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty difficult to walk around with, and it's going to be a pain in the butt. Also, it's part of the torso section, so let's include that here. Um, we need a very nice, thick, heavy um, plate for the sword. If we don't have enough support, it's just going to bend and buckle, and that's not going to be any good. So uh, the main plate on the back is made of much heavier, much thicker EVA foam. I believe it's uh, 3 8 inch as well. Um, additionally, with all the it, with it bearing much more weight, we're gonna be adding these eyelets and rivets, so that when we do uh, kind of um, tie it up, it's much more supported. Uh, in uh, many of the uh, leg, in, in many of the cases around the leg, all of that's hidden underneath. Um, but to make sure that the craft foam isn't worn out, or the warble isn't, war or the Wonderflex and warble are not worn out. <laughs> the eyelets are there as a nice stabilizer. Also, um, it's pretty easy for screws to kind of just punch right through craft foam and lighter materials. Uh, so putting a eyelet or a washer or something there uh, disperses the weight and is good for that. Now the the white sword is permanently mounted to the back. It's just, yeah, it is straight up just permanently mounted to the back there. Um, or at least the sheath is. Um, it is thematically angled in whatever case may be. Uh, um, so yes, uh, we're going to be tightening and untightening this corset section. This is one of the pieces that you actually have to completely undo to get in and out of. The other arms and legs and shoulder you can just undo fairly easily with, um, with the straps. Uh, this one we're going to have to un uh, undo the string to get in and out of. Um, and we've got some of these rivets here where the pieces join together. They're not only going to be acting as mounts, but they're joints as well. So the pieces are going to be pivoting on those parts, uh, thus the need for more hardware, more stable pieces and such. Uh, there we go. And here we're just adding the lace to the back. As you can see, there's a bow there. I left a ton of extra string uh, in case she needs it. But I told her that it would be fine to cut away any extra and this singe off the edge. But just in case she needs uh, more string, I got it there. <laughs> uh, there is a little uh, detail that we're going to be making a warbler. You could be making that out of anything at all, a little diamond or a square shape there. Uh, it's going to be hiding one of the rivets. Uh, but because we're already working with Warbler, we already have that texture on the piece. I thought it was just easier and better to match what we already have, and it'll look good there. Oh, well. Some of the details on the inside are uh, simply the string strung through and then hot glued to the back. And the only reason for that is um, I don't want it to be too bulky and for there to be the knot, uh, like a, a knot on the back side of it where it will rub and be uncomfortable. Oh well. So stick around, we're going to be doing the swords next and that will be the last video in the series. Hope you guys enjoy, good times to all. Mwah! The next video in this series will be on FinalCosmicWar.com. Check the link in the description for more info.